So today's theme is a fantasy and uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing where Penny's taking this because I've chatted about it on, the, on, the, on Skype and things and I'm very excited about the direction. Um, but I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Um, also, I just wanted, if you don't mind, to take a moment to say hello, thank you, goodbye, welcome, all, all those things. Um, because although I'll still very much be part of the team and I'll be around and about, I won't be heading C up CM anymore. Um, and there's more about that in the, in the paper. I don't know if you've all got one or seen it. But uh, so if you'd like to learn any more about like why that's sort of quite a big deal for us, then please do take a look. Um, so more than anything, I really hope that you guys, um, and there's a few familiar faces here, but for, for, for us and for Neve, <laughs> um, many more, uh, Creative Mornings has been fun. And I, I've been sort of chatting, reflecting on the last couple of years. And I think this kind of sums it up for me. It has been so much fun. Um, and I hope it has been for you guys as well. Um, so I won't bore you with tons of uh, thank yous and endless lists, but uh, obviously team, <laughs> like that, <laughs> which has kind of changed over the last couple of years, but uh, has always been a lot of fun to be part of. And um, it's, it's always been a real bunch of very generous and creative people. Um, so that's the most recent. There's uh, people that can be here today, but there's been so many people that have um, added to it in so many little ways, whether it's been chats or, or actually coming along or, or doing many, many jobs for us. So it's been brilliant. Um, also, the speakers, of course, um, who have just been an inspiration to us and uh, they've given up their time for free um, and given a lot away they've, they've talked about their work they've talked about what inspired them to do that work and I, I've learned something from every single one of them and I'm I feel very lucky for that um, we're very grateful to each one of them and um, they 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 make creative mornings what it is they make this creative mornings what it is and that's what it makes make will make your creative mornings what it is and you sort of see that come together over the month af, as the months go by uh, also to you guys um, and to the community at large <laughs> um, because <laughs> <laughs> oh my days <laughs> we're taking over <laughs> oh my god we want a round of applause for Sarah for being Hurt so me awesome misery. and doing this for two years Prophecy and style. To celebrate at the end with next to the pastries, you can all have cake with us. Um, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks to you guys because um, I know it shouldn't be, but I do f still to this day find introducing our speakers absolutely terrifying. So um, I thought I might get used to it one day, it's never going to happen, so I'm going to give it up. But, um, <laughs> but I have really enjoyed it and you've all been such a patient crowd and every, every month it's astounded me, like the group, the kind of talent and, the, and, and the, how clever the group's be, the, the community's been every, at every single event. So thanks very much for getting involved and supporting us. Um, so, Melon, we're welcoming Melon as our new host. <laughs> which obviously really excited about and uh, I know most of you already know who she is so I kind of don't need to do this but at the same time I just wanted to officially just say welcome and let her know that we can't wait to see how your creativity and your talent translates into Creative Mornings going forward and I, I can't wait and I know for what I just know it will be great so that's one thing I do know um, so our sponsors, local sponsors this month are Monotype, uh, Brand 68 and Storm and Shelter. Thanks so much. Storm and Shelter stepped in at the last minute. Absolute superstars. Um, otherwise, I'd be filming it as well. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and to the, the global partners then that, that make all this possible. But also earlier, I was meant to say um, to Outpost Coffee and to Castle Arcade. Is that right? Um, Emporium. Thank you. Um, 
because <laughs> um, obviously it's, it's a, I, I think they've been open before, but to me it's an, I have not been here before and we just want to support you whichever, you know, however we can and hope that you thrive. So thanks for having us. So uh, on to the talk today. Uh, Penny's come all the way from Sheffield to be with us today. Uh, which was a massive undertaking, especially as all the trains were absolutely fucked last night. And she, <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't get in until two o'clock in the morning. So uh, bless her and welcome. Um, <laughs> so please help me introduce Penny Lee. So we're going to mix it up a little bit today. Normally we just obviously have the chat, um, uh, have this, the speaker talk, but today I'm just going to ask Penny some questions. She's a host up in, in Sheffield and it's kind of weird because we're like a host and a host and it's freaking us out. So we're just, I'm just going to ask Penny a few questions. She's going to chat. So well, I, got, I had a speaker, uh, my speaker next month said, I really wanted him to speak and he said, I did a talk before and I was quite nervous, but I did one where we sat and talked and I quite liked it. So can we do that? So I'm stealing his idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt like I had to say yes because if I'm asking people to do it but then I thought how can I make it quite pleasant and also because it's Sarah's last time that it's a bit more it's kind of passing the baton there's, there's Malone but also Sarah was a big influence for me getting set up in Sheffield so awesome. that's why Welcome. I do it like that So how is Creative Morning Sheffield going? Pen? Awesome <laughs> <laughs> No it's, it's going great shall I do the Just clicker click. which one do I do that Just way? That one, yeah. Okay, so this is question one. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going awesome. This was just a quick background of why I started it. I'd been living away, and that'll come later, but I was in China, so this is me thinking I'm all chic in China. So it's not really me, but this is how I envisage me, <laughs> sitting with jet lag, wondering how I was going to settle back home um, after being away once I would get back from China. And so the, the pyjamas thing was kind of fixing in and I had this idea for doing creative mornings um, it just hit me I used to go to them in Amsterdam and um, I just thought this would be a really good way to get involved with the creative community and give a bit back so I was thinking in China with jet lag silly o'clock and thinking who do I know and, and I knew that you needed to do a video and this is one guy we'd worked together about 14 years ago but we just followed each other on social media and he started to become a really good photographer. So I just put, wrote his name on a post-it note and put it on a wall and looked at it every day. And kind of manifested it, which <laughs> worked. So I got in touch with him and he was like, all right, yeah, let's go for it. And he'd been taking these great portraits of the creative community in Sheffield. This is a French uh, illustrator, local illustrator, amazing barrister. Yeah, illust illustrators, artists, um, and what's been really interesting as well is that these people that I didn't know and just knew from his work have started to become involved as well. So it's kind of, by building it, it's kind of mani manifested. <laughs> manifested. Um, so this is back to the obsession with pyjamas. Um, I kind of envisaged being a bit like this, you know, but the reality is a bit more this. <laughs> so I thought, let's go with this. Um, Props, I mean, everything, as you know, everything's on no budget and it's just the idea. And I thought, well, my ideas are free. So I scripted this thing. I thought, pyjamas, uh, Sheffield's the outdoor city. I wanted to do more stuff for the outdoors. Coffee cups, we'll get an outdoor coffee cup. We'll make a, we'll, I'll fake the brand. I want green. <laughs> when I started, they gave me maroon and I made them do green because <laughs> it was like outdoor. <laughs> so I was like, right, how can I put this together? The creative community in pyjamas with a mug. Let's tell that story. So these are my like little rough behind the <laughs> behind the scenes sketches. <laughs> so this was this was kind of my thought process. Um, I was thinking stars of Sheffield. Let's think big. So at some point, I'm expecting these guys to rock up. Who's the guy on the left? Uh, Richard Hawley. Oh. So he was in Pulp as well, and he's actually still very much in Sheffield and involved. I've got more chance with him, but he, and he's fantastic yeah. as well. Beautiful singer. Um, this shot, I just included it because it really made me laugh. So I'm going to show you the video and at the beginning we were looking at how we would set design the video and I just like the fact that it has applause about me being in bed. Anyway, 
And the uh, Mark had taken a shot of a robot works, and it's just, I found out recently, it's quite good to have things that don't mean anything in your movie. So I have one that doesn't mean anything, right? There was a robot works, and I just wanted to make a cardboard robot head and put it on my head. So here we go. To pull those impure thoughts right out your head Loved up on complexity You wouldn't want it any other way Climbing on, climbing on board Giving it a little bit more Climbing on, climbing on board And I, I hope friendly fires are friendly because um, that's <laughs> not supposed to be public. So, um, yeah, please be friendly, friendly fire. Um, so, yeah, so we, we got it going. And, uh, yeah, I used a puppy to get people to wear pajamas. That was a great icebreaker. People don't refuse puppies. Uh, I also... You know, like we then realise that's like, yeah, it's still a really good way to get people in vans, I guess. Um, so it started to happen, and what was really interesting was Mark had some good connections, and I just was really ballsy and went out to see people. And the people that were in the photos now are in it for real, and really part of the community. They're sponsoring, they're giving locations, they're friends. It's like, that's just from August, so that's, I just think that's amazing. And when I was thinking of doing it, I was like, in my little dairy farm and, the, and there was a dairy farmer on Radio 4 who just won the uh, BBC Innovative Farming, Future Farming for the Good Food Awards, he beat McDonald's and it was a little family farm outside of Sheffield, I was like it's a sign and he agreed to do it and he was a fantastic speaker, I wanted to have more uh, creative thinking rather than just designers for designers so I made a big effort and we kicked off with him, so not only did I have puppies we had ice cream um, so I was like how can you not 
things like that. So I wore pyjamas to begin with because I was so nervous. I thought, you know, it's a bit like Beyonce doing Sasha Fierce, but different. I'd take on a, <laughs> take on a different persona. Um, and it worked for the first time. I really didn't know who would come. It was August. Everybody who I knew who I'd got to know through it was on holiday. And I was running around going to get the coffee. And when I got back, all these people sat down. I was like, oh, that's amazing. So th from this one that I learned that there's never a perfect time to start. I didn't know anyone. Everyone was like, oh, you shouldn't do it in August because everyone's on holiday. But I just knew I had to get started and just get going and that people are awesome because people that I have contacted and gone to, there is, you're doing something with good meaning and that just carries on and people want to get involved and, yeah, people are awesome. Two. So what's, uh, <laughs> what's, what brought you here as host of CM Sheffield and as friend to us? Um, the first one is, well, I mentioned that I'd been away, so there was a little bit of it in the video as well, that I'd been in Amsterdam for 10 years, and I'd wanted to move from the city to the country. And someone that, who I'd admired for many years, even before I went away, was this guy, David Hyatt. And I was thinking about what to do, and my side project of the Walking Whiskey Wellness that I was wanting to build into, not a side project, into a, more of a main thing, and he, of course, does the do lectures, I think most people know, and, and does the do workshop. So I went down and went sat around his di dining room table for a day discussing why have customers when you can have fans. And I was discussing working with wellness, but also uh, creative mornings. And so he was like, you know, Sarah. So he put me in touch with Sarah, and then it just really cemented it for me. And it was like, yeah, we're going to do this. So... Because I'd been living in the city and I wanted to be in the countryside. I was thinking, you know, with Skype and how things are these days, that, you know, you can have creativity that's in a city, in the countryside, and this is kind of the master of it. And you've got the chicken shed and a barn and all these people coming to you and the other way around. So I was like, you know, and, and, and being really creative and getting people on board, but in a different environment than, have, you know, a farm in Wales rather than just, like, having to be London or New York or Amsterdam. So then I went to the lectures, and I took that all back with me. And this is on the back door of Sheffield, basically. Um, they just ho the Peak District is just amazing. I didn't even really know it that well before I went away. It's absolutely stunning. So I was like, this is the place to get it set up. Um, but actually, before I'd left, my place had been Leeds, and I knew Leeds and Manchester, so like, why not choose a city where you don't really know anyone? Um, but they, they had this on the doorstep and it was all this outdoors that I was interested in and people were really creating craft and I just had a feeling and I just saw they have this saying at the do, the easy don't build great and I thought it's not the easiest option but if this is going to be a true passion project and something that I know how much work it takes from speaking with Sarah and, and that I have to really love this and I'm no regrets on that front at all. And so I got him to write in the book just to keep to remind me, like, just do it. Meet your heroes always, I would say. Three. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do, you th do you think it's possible to start over and sometimes that that's the only option we might have? <laughs> and do you, <laughs> do you think we ignore the signs sometimes when it comes to living a life that perhaps suits us best? <laughs> yeah, there was th three questions, I and I didn't realise that you'd been deciding like which one is it. I just took the three of them, and it was yes, yes, yes. I was going to make this animate, but then I didn't. Um, just yes, basically. I found this picture, which I just found was hilarious. This is my eighth birthday party. Is that you at the front? That's me at the front. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes how you're behaving as a child is just how you are and sometimes we forget. So I found this picture which I just thought, I just made me laugh so much. I was like, you obnoxious thing. <laughs> um, but this was my influence at the time, which I was quite digging, you know, I'd done my crimp and got my little bow. It was not quite this level, but you know, I was learning. And she was a great inspiration for creative life. Massive, like, this was a big, like, female influence at that time. Like, people were just like, you could go out and be who you wanted to be and change who you wanted to be and change your life and change where you were. Um, so I think 
I just realised lately that, that that's kind of stuck with. So being the kind of the Madonna vibe of the whole story of it was like, take me to New York, take me to the centre of everything, and she's got like five dollars. So I did that, and I went, take me to the centre of everything in Amsterdam with very little money, living in attics for a while. But after a while, I kind of got set up, and then I, I moved on to this boat. <laughs> and this boat was, it was quite funny, when I was thinking of going to New York, this was, in the end, it was filmed, part of it, there's a guy in here, an actor, as a, as a tourist guide to get people from New York to come to Amsterdam, which was quite funny, because I just decided I didn't want to live in New York, but then they were using my home to sell Amsterdam to New York, which was crazy. And sometimes I had people over. <laughs> <laughs> um, and inside, <laughs> I got quite involved. <laughs> this, it's so like, oh, we're at home. This is fits totally. Like, and I, I, I went blonde <laughs> and wore dresses and drove around in a little boat to work. <laughs> I mean, when you talk fantasy life, this just seems crazy now. Like, I was doing this like it was normal, but if I look now, it's like, really? Um, and then I set up a company, and we were in LA, we were pretending like fantasy life. We were actually ordering uh, room service, but pretended we were doing business. <laughs> um, we had a studio, we called it The Girls. We were quite rocky about it. We got our own studio, so we managed to fill it with, like, nice young men. What was it, what was it you did? You were, as a... As a company? It was Studio The Girls and we were a team of two that did creative concepts um, and we did that for, we did it as four agencies and then we also had some clients of our own that we really did the art direction and design and full on campaigns for um, and this studio was set in a production house uh, which was amazing so I got to learn about making film and storytelling, I mean that's why I could kind of script that thing and I knew how it went because I'd been surrounded by these people, and it was, I mean, it was a, a good one. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk fantasy life. I went there for a year not knowing anyone. This seems to be a theme. Um, and after 10 years, I was working with my heroes. I had the boat. I was with the studio on the main canals in between Wyden and Kennedy and 180, and working with big agencies, and it's just crazy. I mean, I just <laughs> work hard. <laughs> So yeah, this was, this was the first hero that I really got to work with, Johan Kramer, and, and he, was, he gave me the studio. So when I quit my job and said, I'm going to start a studio, and I didn't really have any plan, um, he said, do you want my studio? And it, that just, it just kicked it off from there. And what's funny as well is he took that picture of David Hyatt, and it was through working on him for a project where he was filming some people having coffee. And I was working with him on it, putting the site together or whatever, and he went to see David because David had tweeted something about him and then he got in touch with him and then went to go do it. And I was reminded about this guy, and I just think that's really funny, that I was following him before. Then I went to Holland because I was like, he was uh, one of the founders of Kessels Kramer and I was just digging their work. So then when I started working with him really closely for about five years, and then through that get connected again to like <laughs> saying don't come back, it's, it's weird sometimes, these these paths that lie underneath. So it's doing rock star work, I mean, it was awesome. So I worked at like an ad agency, we were doing a lot of international work, getting big work out there, doing stuff that I'd never imagined. Just having a ball really. But work, working really hard and at design agencies and then the last four years with the company and just doing stuff that, yeah, it was nice to get your own flavour of doing stuff. Like everyone had these very chic kind of companies and we just did everything on a super budget and had masks of Mariah and Babs and would send these out and everything was re everyone just thought we were having loads of fun and, and, and we were but it was also being really clever with no budget um, and we'd work with rock star photographers and the same as I've done in Sheffield where I just found people who I'd like to work with and then contact them that's what I also did in Amsterdam a lot and it works so do that <laughs> Um, this is our manifesto. This is a, a piece of work by Christopher Wool that I just adore and kind of it summed up my vibe at that time. And so we also like on a cake, we would write there's too many dicks in advertising the girls and send that out to agencies. So basically calling them names and then they would hire us for lots of money because I don't know. 
<laughs> but I, yeah, I don't know. I was so cheeky. And, the, and, and getting to, and because you're cheeky, that people actually then hire you to make boxes for champagne and you're allowed to do whatever you want, so you put a unicorn horn on it. And that you do work for clients for art fairs and then the opening night you, you beam behind the scene photos of yourself <laughs> <laughs> as people are entering. <laughs> so anyway, that was a whole blast. But then it wasn't. And this was a really beautiful, poignant piece that I found quite late. This is from Haida Hakma, um, a strategist from New York. And I re found this article on Medium and it's called... Uh, do great work, live great lives. And she says, three years ago, three years ago or so, I was a high flying adored agency and trench brand strategist. My life looked a bit like this. Sleep was the enemy. 80 hours weeks were the norm. It was never too late or too early to answer an email. You could put me on a plane to go anywhere, anytime. I lived for the next brief, the next meeting, the next assignment, and all I wanted was more responsibility, more challenges, more on my plate. I was a yes girl until I wasn't until I was totally burned out, until my thinking turned to mush. And that's when my thinking turned to mush, and I kept finding myself in the woods. Um, <laughs> and uh, they opened a Marks and Spencer's down my road, and I just kept standing in it. <laughs> I was like, this isn't normal. I think you might be homesick. Um, <laughs> so... This was me literally at the point. This was a neighbour of Johan. They lived out in this forest and, and it was a neighbour of his who was a great photographer. And I think it, this was at a point where I really decided, I think this is it. I have to let everything go. Everything that I've built up, I have to let it go. And uh, it just, I think it's so poignant for me also because now I also drive an old Volvo that I got on eBay. And it's just kind of stepping away from this fancy life to this more real, just something very different. And so I thought, well, I need to go home and I need some more nature. But then someone said, well, what about going to China? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, some, yeah. And I thought, okay. And it was to teach at a design academy. And it was just to start off small. And then I ended up doing it for six months. And it was incredible. And we lived up this mountain. And talk about fancy life. It was crazy. It was like up this mountain. And on one side, it was like this... Um, derelict Beverly Hills because this was all like government officials that were now in prison for fraud and they had these like huge houses and they had all the furniture and everything inside it was just immense like it was so bizarre like uh, corruption and they'd just done a clamp down so there's like all these empty houses that look like this and they were just getting it was total sleeping beauty and then on the other side if you went down the other way it was complete poverty and it was crazy Anyway, I started blending in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Madonna, change it up a bit. This was my Lies La Bonita kind of look. Um, <laughs> and working with students, which was something I'd always wanted to do, and it was as, it was as much of a joy as I thought it would be. Um, and just after having worked so intensely on myself, it was just really great to have this freshness from the students and work it from their side. So... Yeah, got involved. Took them out. Like, I would just say, let's get out of the classroom. And, and this museum was shut on a Monday, so they opened it for us to just wander around. <laughs> um, and I'd take them to design studios and just get them to see how it was. It was something they weren't doing a lot out of the classroom, so I was like, let's, let's go outside. Um, and it was amazing. So we were up the mountain, but the city looked like this. It's crazy. And the creativity there was stunning. It was re I realised how uh, I was quite ignorant about it, actually. Um, so they were making some great work. I was passing over my rock star baton. <laughs> <laughs> and to help them graduate, which was lovely. And also, I met this guy. This, uh, he had this little coffee shack on the campus. And he was incredible, and he was a coder, and he built this thing. And someone asked me to do a Pecha Cooch talk, which is like our big brother. It's the evening one of these kind of things. And uh, so I said, OK. And they said, yeah, there'll be about 50, 50 people, so like this. Um, so I wanted to tell this story. I thought it was a cute story. Go like this. <laughs> it wasn't really 50 people. Uh, 
and a lot of people have been like uh, talking architecture and all this very serious stuff and I was like here's Halfu and he does coffee and it's amazing that he'd, he'd changed the v VPN code so everyone used to go there to get their Facebook and international community and it was, a, it was an incredible story um, and I thought they were all deathly quiet and I thought oh really um, and at the end, they all just came gushing forward and they all wanted his stickers, they wanted his email, they wanted to know all about it. And I thought, this is actually what people want to hear. And that was another thing with Creative Mornings, to be able to tell these stories of people living very brave, creative lives that are not always in the spotlight. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> am I going too long? What are your th thoughts about the perception that working in the creative industry is real easy? I don't know, does this work? Just to be a bit topical, it's like, <laughs> oh, the pain. It is amazing and it's fun, but it's hard as well. And I think everybody here who's doing it will know that as well. I mean, you do it because you love it and you have to love it because you have to do this stuff like come and sit and talk to 50 people about your life every now and again. Because, yeah, that's where the magic happens. This is a big thing that... I now teach at Leeds College of Art one day a week as well, which is great, and that came from doing the thing in China, and this is something I tell them regularly. Face the fear and do it anyway. Fine, so you can do that more quickly. I know you spoke to the students last week, didn't you, about the creative life a little bit, yes. didn't you? Did, how did that go? Um, it's really interesting. To s you think, like, when you're young, maybe I was exactly the same, that they'd all be really eager. I think you get more eager as you get older. Yeah, I, th I think like, I'm like, what do you want to do? And they're all like, I don't know. And you're like, what do you mean you don't know? Like, just write it down, I don't know. And I, I, I don't know, maybe they're just frightened or it's a different way of thinking. But I think if you've been living a creative life for longer, I think you get braver and you start seeing and experiencing more things and you start seeing other people doing things. And maybe you see what's more possible. Yeah. And that's, I, that, was, that was a really amazing learning for me. And that's what I'm pushing with them. So, yeah. Great. so uh, what, what's led you to come up with the idea for uh, Whiskey Walking Wellness? Walking with Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when I was leaving China, part of with the, uh, not China, sorry, Amsterdam, I mean, part of with the burnout, I broke my ankle and it had a really devastating effect. I basically had to learn to walk again um, for a year. And um, I realised at that point how much I liked walking <laughs> um, and that I'd used to do it a lot. And I had this idea. I used to do it to relax. I used to go to the Dales by myself, stay at this little B&B, &B, walk for eight hours a day. Then I'd find a really lovely pub and have some whiskey and, and, a, and read by the fire. And then the last day I'd find somewhere that had like a converted barn and did like, I don't know, massage or something. And I was telling people this, and I'm like, that sounds a really good formula. We'd quite like to do that. And this came about, it's like walking with wellness, WWW, being offline. I don't know. And it's just started to build. Um, and I couldn't let it go. And it's, it's going slowly but surely, but it's going. And this is my mum <laughs> on a rock behind now where I live. Um, just started to write it. So a bit the same as like with the, the creative mornings, like just start to do it and act as if it already exists and, and, and it starts to become something. And that's what's happening with this very much. Um, I wanted to just do some craft. So it was a side project. So uh, it's all about being earthy and contact with things. So for the logo, I just went to a letter press shop and said, can I have all your W's? <laughs> and just tried some things out and this came just it's just good fun to try some things out and these pencils that I've forgotten that I brought for everyone but they're off um, and just these great ideas in the great outdoors so it was kind of using what had burnt me out and this thing of going in the countryside and that actually it was a really good way to get everyone to think instead of just being sat down and there's a map like the more I'm getting into it the more it's totally true met my partner since they got back and he's really good with tech which is super so we got this like thing from Japan with stabilised and we started filming walks on a GoPro so instead of everyone jumping off a cliff going woohoo it's like we're going slow like it's literally a walk um, this is us trying to make the camera work I like how often I have sunglasses on it's like a regular thing um, does this is there a film with this bit 
sorry. So this was very dramatically in my living room. We thought, let's see how it works on a big screen. And I just had music playing and I think it fits quite well. <laughs> it's quite dramatic. Um, because then someone asked me to go to a whiskey festival in Holland, where they don't have any hills. And we made a, we made a pop-up cinema. And this is just from doing things and, and putting it out there. So someone saw that I did this and then asked, oh, could you come and do that at this festival? And so we had people in Holland of the flatlands drinking Scotch whiskey, watching the Scottish Highlands, random. And this was the guy who invited me to China. This was the head of the teacher and this was someone I used to work with in Holland. And how the worlds collide together, I just adore. And it, and yeah. None, it's not, nothing's planned, but by doing things seem to happen. And yeah, me with sunglasses on again. And I, <laughs> I like that this reminds me of that first shot. And this is now some people have got in touch with me for doing these networking walks um, in the Peak District. And we're doing one next week. It's a lady who's running a group called Dales and Peak. And this was a bunch of women, entrepreneurial women, over from Iceland. And they, uh, just random things that happen if you do things and let things go and put it out there. And it's just sat there. They asked me on the Monday, and we're there on Wednesday with a bunch of ladies from Iceland who were doing really amazing stuff. And I was like, this is great. So this is now where I live. This is my little hip. So I wanted to move to the countryside, so I did. And I've managed to build it up so I can live there. So this is my desk. It's just completely changed my environment. But get to be able to look at amazing stuff like this and think, right, how can I be as creative as I was being before, but nature-based? And there's so many people doing great things. This is from a couple called Eyes As Big As Plates, and I backed them on Kickstarter and follow them on Instagram, and now they're also connecting with me a lot, and that's amazing. So there's something brewing there as well, which is awesome. So the little last things would be, like, keep checking in with what you want to be when you grow up, because I think that changes a lot. I think we're still growing up all the time. So there was the one of me partying, but actually that was when we moved to a town and when we went back a bit further, I think I've gone back to this place now and this is when I was really little and lived in the countryside and my house now looks like this and I'm busy doing this where I used to colour in and go for walks. So I now make that also for the brand consultancy work that I do to give it that vibe. It's like, okay, how do I want this to be if mine's about listening to people and telling those stories, let's go on a walk, let's hear what you want to do. Just a different way of, I don't know if it'll work, it's working a bit at the moment, but just try it. And to sum it up, I, I don't know if I've gone over time, but um, when I was teaching in China and I got there and I was like the staff room and there was all this mess and there was just this dictionary and I opened it up and it landed at this page and I just thought it was so poignant. And I took a photo of it, and I just found it while I was putting this together, and I thought, this absolutely sums it up. So this was a, it was a dictionary for English to Chinese, and it was for the letter B, and it was the word B. And it says, be accustomed to, be acquainted with, be afraid, be after, be born, be busy, be careful, be composed, be confused, be connected, be content, be covered, be crowded, be deep. Be devoted, be devoted to, be different, be diligent, be disappointed, be eager, be earnest, be engaged, be excited, be exhausted, and be expert. And I think that kind of sums it up, really. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>